Greetings, we'll cover a few details about, George VI and his life in a succinct manner. Here is a short rundown of his early years, education, military service, persona, rule as a king, legacy, and demise. From December 11, 1936, until his passing in 1952, he was king of the United Kingdom and the British Commonwealth's dominions. Prior to the British Raja's dissolution in August 1947, he served as India's final emperor. He is King Charles III's maternal grandfather. Also known as Albert Frederick Arthur George, famous as King of the United Kingdom, 1936-52, born December 14, 1895, York Cottage, United Kingdom, died February 6, 1952, Sandringham Estate, United Kingdom. Father, George V, mother, Mary of Teck, siblings, Mary, Princess Royal and Countess of Harewood, Prince Henry, Duke of Gloucester, Prince George, Duke of Kent, Prince John of the United Kingdom, Edward VIII, spouse, Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, children, Elizabeth II, Princess Margaret, Countess of Snowdon, education, Trinity College, Cambridge, Founder Co-Founder King's Troop, Royal Horse Artillery, Bangalore Military School. Prince George, Duke of York, later King George V, and Duchess of York welcomed, their son George VI, into the world on December 14, 1895 at York Cottage on the Sandringham Estate in Norfolk, United Kingdom, later Queen Mary. He was baptized as Albert Frederick Arthur George and was more generally known as Bertie among friends and family. He was born on the 34th anniversary of his great-grandfather, Albert, Prince Consort. He was the second child of his parents and had three younger brothers, Prince Henry, Duke of Gloucester, Prince George, Duke of Kent, and Prince John. He also had an older brother, Edward VIII, a younger sister, Mary, Princess Royal. After his grandfather, father, and older brother, he was fourth in line to the throne. He was described as a frail youngster, who had poor health, especially persistent stomach issues, was prone to crying and easily startled. He also had a stutter that bothered him even after he ascended to the throne. Despite being naturally left-handed, he was obliged to write with his right hand due to knock knees, for which he was required to wear uncomfortable, corrective splints. George VI enrolled as a naval cadet at the Royal Naval College, Osborne, in 1909, and even though he placed last in his class on the final exam in 1911, he continued on to the Royal Naval College, Dartmouth. After completing his education, he spent six months in 1913, in the West Indies and on Canada's east coast, while serving on the training ship HMS Cumberland. On September 15, 1913, he enlisted, in the Royal Navy as a midshipman aboard HMS Collingwood and served, for three months in the Mediterranean. He took part in the divisive Battle of Jutland, the largest naval battle of the war, against the German Navy, while serving as a turret officer, aboard the Collingwood after the commencement of the First World War. Due to a duodenal ulcer that required surgery in November 1917, he was compelled to leave the battlefield. Later in February 1918, he was assigned officer in charge of boys at the Cranwell Training Facility for the Royal Naval Air Service. He transferred from the Royal Navy to the Royal Air Force two months later, with the formation of the Royal Air Force and Cranwell's transfer of authority from the Admiralty to the Air Ministry. He was the officer commanding the Boys Wings No. 4 Squadron at Cranwell until August 1918. He assumed command of a squadron on the Cadet Wing in August 1918, after completing two weeks of training at the RAF St. Leonard's on Sea Cadet School. He did so in order to become the first member of the British royal family to receive complete pilot certification. He flew to Audigny in October 1918, after being assigned to General Trenchard's staff in France to work on the independent Air Force staff during the final few weeks of the First World War. He earned his RAF pilot license on July 31, 1919, and the following day, 
he was given the position of squadron leader. He spent a year, at Trinity College, Cambridge, studying history, economics, and civics under historian R. V. Lawrence. This study period, began in October 1919. On June 4, 1920, he was given the titles of Duke of York, Earl of Inverness, and Baron Killarney by his father. He then began to perform more royal tasks, such as standing in for him at coal mines, industries, and rail yard. Due to his shyness and stammer, he didn't seem as remarkable, as his older brother Edward, but he was more physically active and was elected, President of the Industrial Welfare Society for Enhancing Working Conditions. He was given the moniker, Industrial Prince, and between 1921 and 1939, he played a key role in recruiting young men, from various social strata to the yearly summer camps. In his early years, George VI developed a romantic interest in married, Australian socialite Sheila, Lady Loughborough. But by giving him, the Dukedom of York, his father managed to get him, to cease seeing her. He had not seen Lady Elizabeth Bowes-Lyon, since he was a little boy until 1920, when he was reintroduced to her, as the youngest daughter of the Earl and Countess of Strathmore and Kinghorn. He became instantly, enamored with her and twice proposed to her, the first time in 1921, and the second time in 1922. She turned down her offer both times because, she didn't want to make the necessary compromises, to become a member of the royal family. On April 26, 1923, in Westminster Abbey, they were wed when she finally said yes, to his proposal. Princess Elizabeth was born on April 21, 1926, and Princess Margaret, was born on August 21, 1930, to George VI and his wife Elizabeth. Princess Elizabeth later married, Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark, becoming Queen Elizabeth II. At the time of his father's, passing on January 20, 1936, George VI was second in line to the throne, behind his older brother Edward, but King George V intended Bertie to take the throne. When King Edward decided to wed twice divorced, American socialite Wallace Simpson, many of his close friends and family disapproved of his womanizing and reckless behavior, and it became obvious that he would have to relinquish the throne. Albert reluctantly ascended to the throne on December 11, 1936, adopting the reign name George VI, hoping to restore stability to the monarchy in the wake of the turbulent events that had occurred since his father's passing. On May 12, 1937, the day of his elder brother's scheduled coronation, he was crowned, at Westminster Abbey. His mother, Queen Mary, was present to offer her support that he made two abroad, visits to France and North America in order to, obtain a strategic advantage because, the Second World War was about to start, casting a shadow on his early reign. He granted royal assent, to nine parliamentary measures and signed, two foreign treaties with the Great Seal of Canada, during the Queen's visits, to Canada and the U.S. in May and June 1939. He stayed with U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt during his visit, to America in the White House and at his house in Hyde Park, New York. He and Roosevelt, became close friends over the journey. The royal couple was warmly, welcomed by the general populace, and the visit was a significant political success, helping to forge, the coalition for the impending war. The King and the Queen made the decision, to remain in London after the Second World War began, sharing the same destiny, as the civilian population and being subject, to rationing laws. Even after narrowly escaping death during, German bombs on September 13, 1939, they kept going to morale-boosting visits to troops, weapons facilities, and bomb sites. In 1940, he opposed Churchill's selection as Prime Minister, but they eventually, became good friends and frequently had lunch together, to talk about the war. He invited Churchill, to appear with the royal family on the balcony of Buckingham Palace, to greet the public during, the Victory in Europe Day festivities. After India and Pakistan, gained independence in August 1947, he, the last emperor of India, became both India's and Pakistan's king. 
When India eventually became a republic in 1950, he lost his monarchy there, but he continued to rule Pakistan until his death. During the Second World War, the king proposed establishing the George Cross and the George Medal to honor remarkable citizen bravery. In 1943, he awarded the George Cross to Malta's island stronghold as a whole. He was one of only two people, the other being Churchill in 1958, to receive the Order of Liberation posthumously from the French government in 1960. In 2010's The King's Speech, Colin Firth earned an Academy Award for Best Actor for his portrayal of George VI. George VI underwent a right lumbar sympathectomy in March 1949 to address an arterial blockage in his right leg. George VI had a number of ailments, including arteriosclerosis and Berger's disease. Due to his frequent smoking and subsequent lung cancer, he underwent surgery to remove his left lung in September 1951 after discovering a malignant tumor. He was discovered dead in bed at Sandringham House in Norfolk on February 6, 1952. In his sleep, he passed away from coronary thrombosis. Prior to lying in state at Westminster Hall beginning on February 11, his casket stayed in St. Mary Magdalene Church in Sandringham for two days.